A very good evening and welcome to this edition of the Fourth Estate, Charles Mongu Shampagi. And tonight we continue the debate on the new social media taxes and mobile money taxes, but we're looking at it from the perspective of jobs and taxation, especially when you put it in the context of the economy as it is today. Can this drive job creation? What exactly has been going on? Tonight I have a panel with me, and in that panel, on, on that panel I have, uh, of course, on a Peter Ekomoloit, Corporate and Legal Affairs Director, Nile Boris Ebi Indev. On our way, the pleasure to be with you here. Good evening, Charles, and good evening, Eminent guests. We have with us Jeff Bidandi. Jeff is a legal consultant. Jeff, very nice to have you. Thank you, Charles. Good evening, viewers. We also have uh, Christopher Werishe. Is that how it's pronounced? Yeah, yeah, sure. Werishe is Secretary General of uh, the National Organization of Trade Unions of Uganda. Very nice to have you, yeah. Jeff. Good evening, viewers. Christopher, sorry. And needs not much introduction, Professor Venancia Zayamareva <laughs> is an ICT expert, former Dean of the Faculty of ICT at Macau University, former Vice Chancellor of that university, and former presidential candidate. Uh, Professor Venancia, nice to have you. Nice to have you too, and uh, good evening, viewers. Okay, well, just to begin... saying former, not future. <laughs> 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 the, the, the record we have at the moment <laughs> is that former. he is still a former presidential candidate <laughs> until we have the next election, <laughs> as and when it happens. Uh, maybe if we just ask a question there. Uh, Professor, you uh, weighing your options, depending mm. on what the court rules in Imbale, mm. um, 2021 or 2023, you know, the, you know, this thing of running for president is not a personal thing. Eh? Mm -hmm. It's about the people. That's when the people demand, that's what all of you say. Then you have no choice. Oh, spare me, man. That's what all of you say. Yeah, and people will be saying uh, the people demanded in the last election, and they didn't yeah. see the people at the final ballot. Mm? Mm. No, I stayed up to the last day. And, yes, uh, you did. And when yes. we went to the and ballot, you know what happened? Uh -huh. uh, I didn't even get my vote, but. I got almost one percent, which meant that one out of every hundred people mm -hmm. voted for me. Then there are those who voted, maybe the votes went somewhere. There are those who never turned up because they thought I would not win. Mm -hmm. So that's a very big thing. A man with your profile, almost yes. one percent of yes. the vote. You, you, you see, I mm -hmm. uh, had not been on the stage for a long time, mm -hmm. and I just came in to just contest, mm -hmm. and others had been there for several who, years. Who, who says look at look, compare who, me with the Honorable Mama who, who says you yeah? need you need to have contested uh, so many times? No, you, you don't have to contest several times. Have impact. But you see you have to be on the ground mm -hmm. for some time to campaign that people know that actually you should you should be the president of the country. Now they know. And I'm sure OTT would not have been there if you are the president. <laughs> <laughs> of course it would not as, be there. As, 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 a, as a former presidential candidate, you had ideas mm. for the country and yeah. one of uh, the biggest issues on your profile was that your expertise in the IT se uh, ICT sector. Mm -hmm. Now we're first with... Uh, I had actual expertise in ICT, in education, in yes. job creation, many sectors. Uh, yes. Mm. Uh, lo lo uh, we haven't had you speak about these uh, new taxes, the OTT tax that uh, Ona is talking about, but specifically in the context of uh, job creation mm. and when put in the context of the economy <coughs> today. What do those taxes mean? What can they achieve? What are the pros and cons? You know, whenever you are coming up with a policy or even a law, you need to do stakeholder analysis, you need to do impact analysis. And if that policy or law has a financial implication, you need to do a cost-benefit analysis. Now, if you look at the impact this uh, law has had on the economy, just in these few days or weeks mm. after, uh, from 1st of uh, July. Mm. You look at the tourism sector, you look at the education sector, you look at the health sector, agriculture sector, you know, even employment, it's, it's really big. It's negative, you know. So I, like is, is, is a week a long enough period to do a, a, a fair assessment <coughs> of the impact? Because right. we're, doi we're doing a story uh, at the East African mm. about this, and everybody who spoke to, from the telcos to those who hold dealerships mm. for these major telco com telecom companies to agents mm. to those people who run kiosks selling either airtime or transacting mobile money business they were not able as at that time to give us in concrete terms what this means even Uganda Revenue Authority wouldn't be able to assess and say this is the impact but you're saying you, you it's see, a huge impact across yes, the board there are some areas 
where you can tell with all certainty that the impact system is going to be there. And it's not like they are just reacting. Let me give you an example. About three weeks ago, I, I was at a meeting with somebody from the United Nations. And he told me, but I've been here for four days. I've tried to get a SIM card. I've failed to get one. You know, they tight then on how to get a SIM card. Mm. He had a diplomatic passport, but he could not get a SIM card. And he was a very senior person. And he told me, but if I was to come for holiday, I never come to Uganda. In Kenya, he was in Kenya before coming here. He did it in just 10 minutes. Mm. Because he had his passport and they gave it to him. Now, yesterday I talked to him and he told me, now, even you are making it hard. If I come in with my mobile phone, and you want me to use your mobile money, <laughs> mm. you know, to be able to use WhatsApp and so on, why should I waste my time coming to Uganda when I can go to Rwanda, go to Kenya and so on? Now, let's look at the education sector briefly. You know, students have been using WhatsApp, mm. like uh, to discuss, to even get literature, do a lot of learning. But most of these students cannot afford more than 500 shillings for this communication because they are using about 2,000 things for food and everything for a whole day, mm. including breakfast and so on. So it becomes so expensive for them. If you look at the youth, many of them, you know, we say information is power and your network is a network. If you look at the, the Access to Information Act, it is empowers people to get access to information, apart from cabinet, maybe uh, cabinet minutes and so on. Maybe information that is, is going to energy security. Now, people have been using WhatsApp to access information on agriculture, access information on jobs, look at opportunities and network with other people in most of these sectors, even health, to get health information. Now, when we, even now mobile money itself, you know, people have been using it. But as I speak now, people have moved on to other areas of how we're spending money and receiving money. So the money MTN has been getting at the company is going to, get, to go down. Airtel, the same thing, and other telecom companies. So the issue is, is this going to lead to a net tax like, you know, revenue that is positive? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. You may think that actually but we are how, charging... How did it happen? We, we, we're having mm -hmm. this discussion, um, and, and I want to throw this to Anapito. We're having this discussion at a time when the top three richest men in the world are all investors in this particular sector. How does a government like Uganda tap into this money without um, um, tipping off these kind of sensitivities that uh, Baria is talking about? Um, uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, the one of Facebook, and I think Facebook owns WhatsApp, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. Mm. Has just jumped over Warren Buffett and become the third richest man in the world, uh, just behind uh, behind uh, uh, Bill Gates and uh, uh, and and, and uh, the, the the founder of Amazon. No, I think what the professor is saying is uh, is, is is really spot on in terms of any tax needs to be looked at as part of a web, you know? Every tax has an impact on the entire economy because you have to look at the multiplier effect. When you are targeting to tax X, how does it relate with the rest of the, of the economy? So it's not simply that the people who are, who are said to be gossipers are the ultimate victims, you know. There is always, whenever someone spends, another person is earning directly and indirectly. So I'm not surprised if his analysis shows that there is already a depression in terms of uh, the potential revenue. We, we face the same problem in Ibia. Mm. Over and again, we keep on telling government that it's always nice for people to get excited in parliament to say, let's put a tax on Ibia. It's one of the so-called sin taxes. But the truth is that beer does not just drop from heaven. Beer comes from a crystal product. Mm. The last that drops so from moment, heaven was made by Jesus. The, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the moment <laughs> At Kana. you put an unreasonable tax let's say on the beer and the volume goes down, it means the ability of the brewer to buy grain to make that beer goes down. It means that farmer automatically is denied market. It means the farmer that farmer is growing a denied for you. income. Mm. Well, I, I hate to talk about Nile Brewers in particular, but now I've seen there's a story in the social media saying we are closing one of our products called Chibuku. Mm. And it's a very sad story, which is clearly demonstrates when government... Well, on, on a, just hold it a moment. Mm. Confirm for us and our viewers <laughs> that <laughs> Nile Brewers is closing a factory. <laughs> 
<laughs> is closing a factory and a production line called Chibu. We are not closing Nile Breweries, they, that everyone knows, but there was a sub factory within Nile Breweries which was making a small product called, but very popular called Chibuku, which is something close to Marwa, Ajon, and all these local mm. brews. Because the tax was put at 30% <coughs> of, uh, of, of the ex factory price. And you remember this product competes with mm. the, the local, who, which do not pay taxes. So okay. we spent five years demonstrating mm. to government that yes, we love to pay taxes. And actually, the number one people in terms of compliance. But if you ever put unreasonable tax on this product, it will die because the people have so many options. Yeah. And they said they are blackmailing us. Let's call Even me a are taking like four bottles. They, they went ahead one. and <laughs> effective July 1, we stopped the product. But that's not a big deal. The big deal is the farmers who have been supplying us maize and there's going to be a maize glut. The prices are going to be depressed, but we are going to try to stabilize the maize prices. Mm. Those farmers now have no money. Mm. And uh, the people who are employed in the whole value chain, they have no jobs. So you may say these people, they're just <coughs> making a lot of money, they let them go if they want, but, <laughs> but the farmer anyway. has nowhere to go. Mm. So, so you have to be very careful when you are formulating a tax, not to just look at this elite and what. There is always a linkage with a common person, which I know government wants to protect most. Jeff, let me come to you on this. Um, mm. One is that you, you're a legal consultant. There has been a challenge that's been filed against this tax. Mm -hmm. We hosted one of uh, the brains behind that uh, on a show here yes. two Sundays ago, just mm -hmm. before the tax took effect. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also have seen a lot of mixed communication from government. Mm -hmm. One is left wondering how exactly government processes work, because shortly after the tax took effect, uh, the Minister for Finance said, uh, I, I, I don't remember us discussing in cabinet that it should be 1%. We actually discussed it should be 0.5%. Uh, then the junior minister, David Bahati, came out and said, this is what we passed. Uh, mind you that the, the law, the Excise Duty Amendment Act 2018, in which this tax was provided, bore the signature of the Minister of Finance, uh, Matia Kasaija, who denies that they discussed 1%. So putting the percentages aside, we also saw communication during the week from Uganda Revenue Authority to telcos, Telling them, don't enforce the deposit money. Uh, I mean, the, the tax on deposits mm. uh, for mobile money. What explains this confusion? What's the chance that uh, the, the, the young men who have gone to court um, have? They haven't presented an argument, so we don't offend the subjudice rule, at least of, as, as of this stage. Charles and uh, my colleagues on the panel, this is a political issue than a legal issue. Why? Because the president came out clear and said that these people doing Lugambo, you know Lugambo, like rumor mongering, mm -hmm. given the type of communication on WhatsApp. It's very effective with the younger people because the young people have a lot of time. It's a modern era. It's the way things are done. Now, to me, I look at it as more political than it should be a legal issue because there are a lot of load blocks along the lawmaking process, even the the 2018 amendment bill was very clear. Parliament comes, there is the consultation, there is the sitting of the House and everything. All these steps were followed and the law was passed. So no one can come and say, maybe I missed out on this, because the minister is on read the budget. And it was public information. As you said, one of the documents has his own signatures and is dying at this particular time. Mm. <coughs> so to me, I feel this is a political issue. Because look at Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter and everything. These people were not here until mid-2000s. They invested a lot of money into the connectivity. Like this is all the way to my village. I was there yesterday. We were using the social media. It was very... Uh, the network was good. There was no complaints. Back to Kampala, it's the same story. So wherever you are, you get this social media. Now... You're saying it's a political issue. Yes, it's a, politi is a political gain. Now, a party like the National Resistance Movement, yes, which is looking at uh, the biggest support among young people. Is it so, so what's the politics about it? The WhatsApp is mainly enjoyed by the younger people, yes. right? And the they older, the majority of the voters. Yes, and they're the majority and the biggest population in the country. Yes. First of all, the head of state said 
these are Roma mongering and whatever. Okay? His comment was very clear. And therefore, his position was clear. Now, some people in the parliament and on his cabinet sat down and designed this tax and imposed it on Ugandans. So why call it a political issue? The guys who brought this tax, the minister, Honorable David Bahati, the members of parliament who passed <coughs> this tax, had a political interest one way or the other. What is that political interest? So they were either uh, fighting the president, or they imposed this tax on Ugandans as a way of fulfilling his interests. Because he's is, been is, totally is, against that, social media. Isn't that a contradiction? Because no. if the president says that this is a tax designed against people yes. spreading rumors. Rumor mongering. Yes. So then oh, are you in oh, support oh. of it? Eh? Are you in support but of he it? Supported it? No, he didn't. He did. He didn't. Because if he supported it, no, 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 he could not he have agreed to sign this even, taxation. Even his letter doesn't walk back the social media tax. It walks back steps on mobile money tax. Yeah, of course. Yes. Mobile money tax has the numerous deposits of money. It's been very important to every person. Like I, I often use my phone to send mobile money every day, no, every uh, one day. I, I, and, my and the strength makes sense of your claim that this is a political issue. Yes, because... And, and I'm looking for the politics of it. The president said this room among us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the members of parliament and the honorable minister who was actually on NBS, he said, we are looking at imposing tax on social media. He said it. Mm -hmm. No one picked the argument by then. Mm -hmm. Parliament passes it. There was no heated debate in you, parliament. You, you they were very the quiet. Fact, you ignore the fact, Jeff, that um, the justification has been mm. that this country's tax base is still very low. That the biggest complaint for many years has been that taxes are concentrated on the few people and that this is government's attempt to democratize tax payment. Charles, yes. I'll give you a, a, an example. If you go to the Middle East and increase even five shillings on the cost of flour and wheat, the government will change. Here in Uganda, we have no priorities. Whatever that everybody uses is what the government wants to tax. Social media, mobile money. So we have a clique of people in the government who think that whatever thing is important to an average Ugandan should be taxed. There are a lot of people with money. There are a lot of companies operating here and they don't pay taxes. Uh, Christopher, let me come to you quickly. Uh, one of the major issues, we frame this topic to look at job creation. Mm. The age of internet, the ICT sector, has emerged as one of the major opportunities for job creation. Government's concern has been that some of these major telco companies, telecom companies, are actually not creating as many jobs, but they are shipping jobs away. And they want to claw back a little bit of the money they create. I, I, I don't understand the logic of this because uh, the complaint has been that they, they, they are making money, but they are not remitting enough taxes. Mm. Now, instead of finding a way to tax them, the tax is passed on directly to the consumer. How does these, do these new taxes fit into the government's drive to create jobs. Is it creating any jobs from what you hear from uh, Professor Varia, Varia Mareva, is that actually you're losing jobs, you're not creating any? You know, when, he, when I was listening, I saw the Professor, I was very excited. <laughs> <laughs> because I thought he's going to tell us the real truth of what is happening in ICT. But, but that's what I was thinking. Hmm. But instead, he jumped. And when he jumped now, I'm not even understanding about the issue he's talking about, the, the alarm of how people are being removed. What the real situation we are talking about here is companies like of ICT use facilities like servers. And these servers, if they are not kept here in this country, you cannot have jobs. And, and, the, and the professor is not even mentioning on that. Start from the, the companies themselves here. What are they, are they doing the right thing? And for me, that's what I would want government to do. The disease which we're having is what we call outsourcing. That's the problem number one. Outsourcing of functions is bringing us problems in this country. And that's why we're losing a lot of money. Go to Tanzania, I mean to Rwanda here. MTN Rwanda had outsourced its function. Of, uh, of remote control from Uganda. They find it, 8.5 billion US dollars. So what is it that they are leaving these companies before they go <laughs> with mobile money? Can we cross-check? Are they doing the right thing? Eh? This is where we should start. 
let's start from the companies. Remove outsourcing, put here, and then move on. And by the way, if we don't stop the story of outsourcing, we're going beyond. I was telling the president recently, I said, when you look at a company like uh, Roofings, it's doing standard work for the workers. But the challenge they are facing, we are having companies like Tembo, who are using casual laborers who don't pay uh, the, this NSSF, they don't pay pay, they don't pay the, the smallest 2,000 shillings. Mr. Vishy, you, 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 you're mentioning firms uh, that yes, don't have a, an opportunity to defend themselves yes, yes, uh, have, on air here. It's, it's written. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying, mm. what is it that I'm trying to talk about? Taxes have already gone off in that hand, making the business difficult for other people. There are people who are not uh, running this. So the point I'm making is outsourcing is one of the key issues, which for me I will look at. So jobs cannot be created in that arrangement when they are moving like that. Mm. If we don't have this ICT corrected, don't talk about what is happening in mobile manager. That one is just an uh, unsolved problem. Mm. I, I, but I know. I, but uh, yes. just uh, to, to rejoin Mr. Wariki, but it's also it's nice to get uh, these companies to comply with the law. But I think also government loses a bit of moral authority to want to get these companies to do the right thing where it failed to do the right thing. How did most of these companies come in? Because entities that were run by government failed. And I think like in the telecoms, there's one which is closely linked to government, which has been struggling. Mm. So it, it really <laughs> that's part of the problem. You want, you say no outsourcing. But please, when you have your hand in something, demonstrate that you can do it. Yeah. Otherwise, you lose the moral authority to question people who kind of come to bail you out. You know, when you have a staggering sector. I, I, I have information know? on They that. may be breaching here and there, but also you are not helping yourself by setting standards. By say if, if government has a hand in this, it's working. Hmm? Oh, oh, hmm? I have information. I think hmm? uh, uh, Mr. Urike hmm? is being uh, guarded hmm. in a way. Hmm. That one of the major telcos has actually outsourced a lot of, uh, of jobs. And over, I think, the last uh, two to four years, Mr. Urike can correct me yes. uh, if I'm wrong, hmm. has been laying off. Ugandan workers because that work is done remotely. Now, a few years ago, I had the president, I think speaking uh, behind us here uh, at the Serena International Conference Center, talking about jobs outsourcing where in the service sector. Mm. I, I remember him mimicking the Indian accent, mm. saying that a utility company in the United States, mm. when someone makes a call to inquire why power has gone <coughs> off or a telephone connection <coughs> is not working, they are served by somebody remotely mm. in India. And he said those jobs could come to Uganda. Now, the ICT experts, including the professor here, will tell you those are some of the things that can be done on the phone yeah, in absolutely. the comfort of somebody's sitting room or bedroom or wherever, and they can earn money from on there. Top of that, now, my question is... Before... Yeah, uh, yes. Okay, your question. Yes, my question is, mm. when government comes up with an idea to tax social media the way it has done. Mm. Does that help the outsourcing is talking about, which in this case is affecting Uganda negatively? And this so is the question I okay, before positive. the professor answers, for me I just wanted to say part of the efficiency of private entities like these telecoms is their global connectivity. Mm. And it's very difficult to divorce excellence mm. In, a, in one part of the world from global excellence. So the inevitably, big businesses will always have that cross-pollination. <coughs> That's the way in which they are structured. And if you think that you are going to have a truly Ugandan-run big company, it just doesn't happen anywhere in the world. Mm. There will always be other elements which are linked <coughs> to the other parts of the world. That's precisely how all the multinationals, that's why they are called multinationals. But, but, well, but, maybe but, 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 come in. But, mm. but what, what mm. one is saying mm. is not uh, answering the point of job creation in these uh, companies which have come here. Because some of these companies right now, as we see them, the telecom companies are just a skeleton 
But the people benefiting are those where the function has been outsourced from. And he's saying that's the nature of <coughs> yes. uh, no, MSCs. Yes. But, but is that what is intended when, in, when you are coming here? To me, I would think that uh, that's a bridge of license because you come to create jobs, but you are making where the outsourcing is, hmm. you are having bigger numbers here. Like I said, you come here, recruit 200 engineers, take them through the process, take away your server. Where are you taking them? There are people who are going to manage them. So the 200 people are outside this country. For you here in Uganda, you are left with two guys. That, that's the West. Yeah, right maybe now, yes, maybe what I can, uh, can say, what he talked about Rwanda was the data center. Mm. That they were keeping data of Rwandese people. Like, that the data they have like on people from Rwanda were on, let's say, MTN, mm. outside Rwanda. Mm. But the issue of outsourcing actually here for the telecom companies is being outsourced within the country. There is the, this company called Huawei, the, mm -hmm. the Chinese company. Yes. They have their base here. They have Ugandans employed here. Mm. They provide technical support to one of the companies. Then we have other companies like the one of Badun, Tegi, and others mm. within the country. Mm. There's ones who do call center services. Mm. So actually, the services are being outsourced, but they are still within within the country. Uh, professor, yes. if I could just add in some information. Yes. I, I, I have uh, seen communication. I think there was a meeting with the president this week. Yes, yeah, yes. On Thursday, on Thursday mm -hmm. there was a meeting with the president, a petition against one of the major telcos for primarily outsourcing of jobs. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at what you talked about... They retrenched the employees within yes, the company, the, but gave no, the no, jobs. No, uh, yes. Retrenched the employees within the company, set the data center outside the country. So, use the Ugandans to train those other people to be able to do some of this work. But that's not, uh, that for me is part of a smaller problem. He's talking mm -hmm. about 200 people. 200 people is not such a huge number. The question is, if, like you said, that mobile money usage mm -hmm. drops because you have imposed a three, uh, okay, three taxes on the same transaction, on the same money, and therefore people can't be able to sustain uh, those young uh, men and women who have been running these mobile money kiosks, mm -hmm. What is the long-term effect to job creation if government, uh, and I'm hoping that government thought through this carefully. Yeah. I don't know if they did. Well, I don't think they did. You see, if you look at, let me give an example of traders. Uh, traders have been using mobile money. Like if I'm trading from even and I want to come to Kampala, you put the money on mobile money, either send it to a relative or come with your phone. Mm. But then they come here, you withdraw the money, and then do your business. But now, if you send one million, it is costing you some good money, mm. you know. And they're saying, why through this expense? Yet when you go to a bank and you put this money on an account mm. and you come and withdraw it again, it will not cost you even 3,000 shillings, mm. you know. So all we are saying that let these people get off the mobile money system and go back into the formal banking sector. Those who are not in the formal banking sector, let them what? Remain with their money in, the, in their homes. And to me, that's not helping business because at the end of the day, these companies like MTN, Airtel, and so on, when you look at their net profits, mm. they are going to be, they are going to go down. So what you are taxing on those profits will also be small. <laughs> now the other thing is how to collect some of these taxes, like the one on uh, on the two hundred shillings. Mm. You only supposed to pay it using uh, mobile, mobile money. money. Yet not everybody has mobile money. So already it's not easy to collect. Somebody was saying. Uh, that you know, maybe let us also explore airtime. But you are complicating the whole system. Are you going to also look into the cost of these companies in terms of collecting tax for you? What, what is the risk, just before you take a break, gentlemen, mm. that in the anger against the tax of a service that has made, has gotten all Ugandans talking and we spend all our time um, <laughs> uh, on our phones, that we end up uh, defending NNCs, these multinational corporations, Mm. and denying government an opportunity to actually raise the, the, the critical taxes. But you see, need. the issue of talking on the phone, being on the internet all the time, actually is what is desired. Because that's why the government came up with e-government. People are supposed to access information. It's like you, you, nobody is checking to see people are actually talking gossip. If you go on WhatsApp, you'll find farmers groups, traders groups, all sorts of special interest groups mm. really discussing real issues. And I, also I, engaging I, in the business. And I, I know a very so active. Is, maybe the only well, thing the only thing the government can to, mention. Go to the spice yes. of life. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe the only thing the government can talk about <laughs> is that if you're having these idle people, they're on WhatsApp, they are networking. 
<laughs> the time they decide to be against you, security wise, mm. you may not contain them. You know, I see, instead of being a political issue, it may be a security issue. That you are having so many idle people, they are networking, they are gossiping, you don't know what they are planning in their groups. So at the end of the day, if they decide to turn against you, you may not contain them. Gentlemen, you may not be able to look at my phone. One of, I, 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 have, I, I know a, a WhatsApp group. Mm. Interestingly, mm. You, you can read it for, 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 for the viewers and the gentlemen who haven't seen it. It discusses nothing else apart from that. <laughs> this is a WhatsApp group that discusses, is, is, it's called Cassava for Money and Wealth. Mm -hmm. They discuss nothing else apart from Cassava Growing and Marketing. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and this one is also a victim because the members on this platform are supposed to pay the 200 shillings to be able to access and uh, remain active. We need to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we continue the discussion on social media tax and job creation, the pros and cons of these government taxes. We'll be right back. You're still yeah, watching right. the fourth <laughs> estate, and we're discussing the social media tax and job creation. What are the pros and cons of these government taxes, especially in a matter that has raised a lot of controversy, like the social media tax and the mobile money tax? Now, I need to bring our viewers up to speed. A lot has happened. Uh, it's actually exactly one week today since this social media tax took effect. It uh, started uh, on uh, 1st July, which was Sunday at midnight. Um, uh, social media was switched off. Uh, by the telco companies that provide it and required that people have to pay 200 shillings for access uh, WhatsApp, Facebook and uh, a whole list of uh, other um, uh, social media platforms and also a, a tax on mobile money transactions uh, which is uh, initially, government has now changed a few positions but on deposit, on uh, yeah, if you, 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 uh, 1% on deposit or 1% on uh, spending Sending 1% on uh, receiving, 1% receiving, on withdrawing. That would be four taxes on the same money before it gains any value, uh, which last week I said was uh, uh, kind of funny. What has happened in between is that both the Uganda Revenue Authority and uh, the government has said, has removed the charge on uh, depositing. Because like moving your money from your pocket and putting it on the phone, uh, which is now no longer being, it's supposed not to be charged though the law hasn't been amended yet, there's been talk about amending the law, and was also an, uh, learnt from the President, from the Minister of Finance, that the discussion or the government's decision position was 0.5%, not 1%. That is in the Excise Duty Amendment Act 2018 that covers uh, this tax on mobile money. The taxes on social media have been uh, challenged in court. I, I think Cyberline, Cyberline uh, Uganda Limited, is the one that has gone to court. And so we're discussing it from that context. But um, uh, we're also finding out as uh, the media that a lot of transactions have significantly dropped uh, since because people will ask, uh, tell me, uh, Professor Valia wants to give me 100,000 shillings or I owes me 100,000 shillings. Instead of saying, put it on my mobile money, on my phone, I'll tell him, where are you? Uh, how, what does it take? Give me 10 minutes, I'll be with you. And then I can walk over across and, uh, and, and meet him and pick the money um, if he has it. Nteji Asima is watching us and says, Charles, I had a private discussion with Tamale Mirundi this weekend. He told me that having failed to defeat Museveni politically, his enemies, some of whom are in government, have invaded or passed through the economy by touching the live wire of the youth who will vote him out in 2021. I don't know. <laughs> Nteja, I don't know where this is going. <laughs> How close about this is? That's true. A, a, another viewer here, I don't have the name, uh, says, uh, Charles, can you imagine that I am a tour operator? This social media tax made me to lose 49 tourists from the United States who were going to spend four months in Kidepo and Nimboro National Parks. They cancelled their trip to Uganda. I don't know how... Uh, you, 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 you might help us to give us a little bit more of information um, uh, why they cancelled because of the social media tax. Do they want to come to Uganda and spend all their time WhatsApping their friends and taking selfies and sending them on Instagram? A another viewer here says, uh, um, uh, okay, someone is asking if my WhatsApp is on. Uh, <laughs> someone says, uh, 
Professor Varia used to train hundreds of Ugandans in ICT at Makere University. He actually not used to train them, he still continues to train them. I think at the university called Utamu, the, the Uganda Technology and Management uh, University. Yes. Yes, Utamu. Uh, where are they going to work? If the telcos are taking ICT jobs to New Delhi, for example, is Onapito saying the training by Baria was useless? And therefore, telcos don't trust the labor from Ugandan engineers. I need you two gentlemen to respond to that before I read the next message. Which gentlemen? You, you are a professor and uh, okay, honor. I will this, this is pointed to you. <laughs> Look, I, I think, guy. one, the training is two-pronged. It's one, to get people who get employed by the existing telecoms, but also above all, perhaps, to create other telecoms or other ICT operations. Okay. So, uh, that would be the ultimate success mm. of the training. But, but I, I, while I definitely appreciate that Ugandans should dominate every aspect of the economy in terms of employment. But sometimes the 200 or so employees are the le least important in a company. There is something which I mentioned earlier called the multiplier effect. So if you have 200, let them be foreigners, seated in Kampala, of course, earning big salaries, which everyone would want to get, they are being there. Are they creating an economy that is employing other Ugandans out there, who certainly will not be foreigners. Mm -hmm. That's why they are Ugandan. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at the whole value system. Mm -hmm. For me, I would question whether the value chain is creating other jobs other than the 200 that are being held by the foreigners. If it is not, then that is not a worth So is the value in the chain, in, the, in, in light of these new taxes, is it actually creating those other jobs? I can't, I can't it speak for the critical. telecoms. Maybe the professor knows better. Professor, you're the one who, who trains yes, these ICT experts. Let me just provide a comment mm. on that one. You mm. see, if you're a multinational company mm. and you want to open a base in Uganda, in Tanzania, and other places, mm. you look at the services you need to provide within that very country. In other words, mm. they don't come here to just employ people. Mm. They mm. come here to employ the people they need. And then they say these services should be centralized somewhere. So that you, you, they, are, they provide support from that central place, you will not dictate to them to say, bring also this service to Uganda. Mm -hmm. Because it's not cost effective for them. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mention some telco companies here, but some of them have been making losses over the last four years. So they have to cut costs here and there. At the same time, I think it's good because if you don't allow them to do that, they will close. So, so to me, we need to balance. But you see, it takes us back to the other area. We need to create more jobs. Mm -hmm. You can't just rely on telco companies only, those few. Let's create more jobs. <coughs> And this, this act that has come in, <laughs> it is not helping us to create jobs. You see, the word social media did not come by accident. Social media was coined from social services. That when this social media like was put in place, was supposed to enable people to, uh, it was enabled to enable access to social services. Later on, the element of networking came up, now the element of business. People are doing a lot of business. I have somebody talked about graduates from ICT. Mm. Recently, I met Four graduates, one of them finished in 2012. I said, what are you doing? He said, I have a shop. You know they have a shop? Mm. They don't have a physical like location. Mm. They, they are just doing the business on WhatsApp, on Facebook. They have their numbers there like on Facebook. So that when you want their product, they tell you come to this place down is called what? Room Street or somewhere. Mm. There is somebody's shop, but for them, they just come there and sit and give you a phone mm. and you pay. Just like that. But, but everything is done online. The, the, the same thing uh, yes. Jeff Bezos and Amazon is doing, yes. or Alibaba is doing in China, for China, mm. I think, that mm. they don't own anything, they don't sell anything, they use social media to link yeah. a buyer and the owner of the product. Mm. And they are doing well, because you see, we have so many who are unemployed. Now, if some of the youth can be innovative to say, let's do business on Facebook, on WhatsApp, and President Seven, I like him for one thing, he said, I want to enable the business people. He's enabling the big companies with lowering electricity tariffs and so on. Why don't you just create an enabling environment mm. for the majority of the youth? Mm. By ensuring, actually, in some countries, in some countries, internet, access to internet is heavily subsidized. Do, do you think the president is blind to that? He's not, but there must be people who are misadvising him. I don't know who is misadvising him. No, too. Let me let me come back to you, uh, mm. Christopher. I, I think uh, I, I mean, Noto has been silent <laughs> when people have been crying that they're going to lose jobs <laughs> because of this tax. Why? Wh what explains that? 
You see the biggest problem no, not is to has uh, eaten. <laughs> it's not about not to have eaten. Mm. <laughs> People are just making drama of the change which has come, uh. which they think. Eh? I mean, for me, you are dramatizing. Oh, uh, let me come and pick the money. Uh, don't put it on mobile. Mm. This, so, so many of these things have happened. Mm. In terms of, like what the professor is saying, companies are doing business from home. I mean, they, they are making losses here. So therefore, they must find a way of making profit by taking away the facilities from this and go and do the other side. That's wrong. Two, you have also, Professor said, that people who are doing business, eh, selling food, using social media, the extra cost comes back to you, the consumer. You've known this, you've heard about beer. Each time they change, what does the brewer lose? It's me who's going to eat who loses. So let's look at it in that perspective. Eh? This social media for business will continue. The cost will be transferred to somebody else. My keeping quiet is well not have kept quiet. I have told you, made my point very, very clear, that we have now waged a process on outsourcing, including casualization of labor. Government should collect money from that direction. Of why are they allowing people to do casual work? They are missing out tax. And this is something which we must now chase and, and, and bring the order back. So it's not about the story of keeping quiet or we have eaten. This is just something which has come one week. Mm. We are trying to study it and see how we're going to proceed. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the eating with the patriarch, <laughs> the Indians <laughs> don't eat. <laughs> Rwanda is not the just an island. Mm. We have Kenya, we have Rwanda, we have Tanzania and other countries that are neighboring us. Mm. If companies, at, international companies are trying to look for an investment destination, even if they want to bring in foreign direct investment, and they look at the, your competitiveness, mm. what should they bring them here? But, but, but mm. pro professor, I, I am glad, mm. Professor, you, professor, you, you have raised that thing. Mm. Eh? Mm. Tanzania, I was telling you, has stopped remote logging in. These companies are doing business within. So, Rwanda has done the same. Kenya is doing the same. This is why you can go get the money back. So, don't create policies which are wrong. And this is what we're asking the country to do. Uh, 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 just let me come to you. In a country where the youth constitute 78% of your population, where the only available study that we're using, uh, that, that we're using is a few years old, um, uh, a report that was released by the World Bank, I think about almost nine years ago, um, that put the unemployment rate mm -hmm. at 83% of Uganda's uh, potential employable um, population, 83%. The Ministry of I, or the, the Ministry of Labour, Gender and Social Development has different numbers because for them they look at unemployment specifically on youth, and youth is uh, are people between 18 years mm -hmm. and 30 years. Yeah. So when you narrow it to that uh, small demographic, the unemployment rate is not that bad; doesn't look that ugly. But when you actually interact with the raw numbers, the raw numbers look a, a, a lot uglier than that. Policies like on taxation. How should they be designed to deal with the number of unemployed people? Because some of this uh, social media tax is spent on keeping those unemployed people a bit busy. It is uh, on uh, yourself, uh, Christopher, Professor Varia, who are sending money to someone who got out of school, uh, someone professor thought and has never found a job to keep them going for some time on social media. Uh, how do you align policy, if that is what you're faced with? Yes, that's a very good question, and actually thank you for it. It's good I'm one of the young people in the country, in between that age group. Now, when we come to tax policies or the taxation, we should put our interests clear. What does government want to achieve? What do the people intend to achieve? What do the people intend to gain? Uganda is one country which does not put much interest on its own people in terms of the ordinary people, an average Ugandan, right? Mm. Because with the social media tax, an average Ugandan will stop using social media. Mobile money, people will stop using mobile money, including myself. I am not using mobile money. If you want to give me money, deposit it on my account or look for me wherever I am and give it to me. Mm. So the ordinary people will abandon the service. Those who can afford will use it. So the taxation policy, we have to look at our priorities. What does the country need? We've been looking at tourism, for instance. It's something which we have all the resources available in the country, but the government does not put a conducive environment for everybody to participate in. I, I'll tell you what the country needs, yes. or what the government needs. Uh, 
what the country needs and what the government needs might be at variance at some stages. But what the government needs is to raise more taxes. Yes, government and it's looking for every opportunity. To of course, the, the the taxes is a source of financing for the government. Mm -hmm. Okay, the citizens have a duty to pay the taxes. This is a constitutional mandate. But before you take from me, you have to empower me so that I'm able to pay. You know, I may be out of a job, and then somebody can give me a lump sum amount of money, and then I can use it or you spend it recklessly. But if somebody gave me another job, then I will be more sustainable, and then I can actually earn a living better. So. We need to look at the incentives. The a situation where a government comes and taxes something that benefits all of us. The government is being felt in each and everybody's pocket now. Mm -hmm. Because before, I used to think that the ordinary people don't pay taxes. But look at the hundred shillings on petrol. Very soon, by the end of this year, we'll be buying petrol at 5,000 a litre. What's the average salary of a Ugandan? Let's say 400,000. So how many litres of petrol can you buy for 400,000? And you need petrol every day. Now look at social media. So look at Bob so Bellman. Uh, do you think somebody earning 400,000 should be owning a car? Well, somebody with a salary mm -hmm. can have his car. Mm. Because the salary may not have created the vehicle, but he could have had other sources of income, mm. or he comes from a rich family. But what I'm trying to bring it with is that fuel is a very important drive of this economy. Mm. Because the farmers transport using fuel. We have a lot of companies, these small scale companies, operate on fuel. We have the Generators, they're operating on fuel. The saloons, if they run out of power, they use fuel. So now you levy 100 shillings extra on fuel per liter. So that means you, your taxation policies are not in favor of an average person. You're simply squeezing as much as you can. So we have the <coughs> elite class who earn a lot of money, right? Like you with your salary job or like me with my salary job. Taxing me with pairs, and it's very okay. Mm -hmm. I want to complain. Why? Because Why? you will tax me. Because I have to pay the tax. I'm receiving the money. But another person with no salary, with nothing, and then you're trying to push him on the free services that he can get to keep him busy, then you make it difficult for him. Oh, now, when you have a situation whereby the beer companies are complaining the taxes are too high, the telcos are complaining, there was a debate, by the way, mm -hmm. between government and the telcos on this social media and, the, and mobile money tax. And the telcos said, you put the tax on us, we'll pass it on to the consumer. They reached a compromise and said, pass the tax on to the consumer, where we are and creating all this debate. If everybody's complaining about the taxes, mm. you served in government, you were in parliament, you served the president as his uh, presidential press secretary. How do you navigate? If you're government and you're faced with all these pressures, First you need to create to jobs, you need to create services, you need to. Uh, to correct the impression, BIA is not necessarily saying taxes are too high. It's, I spoke about a particular product mm -hmm. within the beer. I think some of the BIA, we, we agree with government, the taxes were just right, and it's benefiting the consumer and the economy. I think the, the conclusion from all this is that government like needs to do what it claims to do best, consultation. Because they are dealing with people who are also educated, who understand. The ICT people are supposed to be among the most sophisticated. Government could have actually gone to them and say, fine, we are proposing this tax, mm. and if you disagree, tell us why. And the common thing is we need money in the economy. If they can prove that by not having this tax, the economy actually benefits, and the facts are there, the government should pull back. But if a bunch of people sit in parliament and other places and they just do mob justice eh? which often happens they decide to lynch a certain thing and say these guys must pay this look before i joined beer i was i used in parliament i had had no knowledge about what was happening in beer so sometimes people who are totally ignorant in the government offices this take decisions about things they don't understand you can't blame them but they should be humble enough to consult those who know mm. well, and it's for the good of the country they should take the advice of those who know. Well, we, we are learning that uh, mm -hmm. the Parliamentary Committee on uh, Finance that scrutinized the bill, mm -hmm. one, either they didn't read it or they ignored the voices that wanted a, a more thorough scrutiny of the uh, bill. Uh, uh, and, and that it was wrong. They mob justice. Yes. Is, the mob does not listen. <laughs> <laughs> it just leech. <laughs> Charles, the most interesting <laughs> bit <laughs> with the debate about that uh, 2018 mm -hmm. amendment bill. Mm -hmm. Parliament passed that bill and uh, it was very clear in the media. We saw some MPs commenting about it. 
So they passed it in their comfort in the parliament. So they obviously didn't do any consultations as it should have been. Now, when the taxation is actually biting the people, that's when MPs come out and then try to distance themselves from what transpired. And I look at the whole institution of members of parliament now, that they are actually debating for their own interests than debating for the people who sent them what, to parliament. What are the interests of the members of parliament? Because if you sit the down and levy such a tax, mm. and you also use the, the, the service, because MPs are on mobile money. They're mm. also using mobile money. I think the iPad is for internet, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why they didn't mind. Mm. I've but seen jokes that uh, all, all, all their salaries for July should be sent by mobile, mobile money. So so an average Ugandan, who knows how important mobile money is and social media is, should not even have allowed but this I, to I, come I, to I put the question to you, Jay, before, mm. that when telcos have decided that they will not shoulder this and government is trying to claw back some money because it thinks mm. I, 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 I officially um, 63 trillion shillings is transacted through mobile money yes. annually. This is a, a 105 trillion um, uh, economy. 63, I think 0.8 trillion is transacted There's through mobile money. 60%? Yeah? 60%. Yes. And the uh, government looked at this and said, this is low-hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. Why but, don't but we... Charles, that's where the why problem don't, why don't we get we it? We should not simply see a lot of money yes, and I think that it should be taxed. I see, mm. ideally, there should be only two yes. justifications for taxing someone. One, if they are getting an income or they are making profit. So even if I have my no. billions yeah. and you see it, but it's not a profit, and it's not an income. It's, I've already paid maybe tax elsewhere. Why would you want to panic and say, let's get this money? That's the robbery now. Okay. <laughs> that money has been there. Mm. People have been keeping it mm. in their homes and the mattresses mm. and so on. Mm. So when the mobile money system came up, mm. the rural people felt because mm. the cost wasn't much. They could put the money on their mobile phone. Mm. But the other thing is you have this misconception that, you know, if you increase taxes, then you'll collect more taxes. Mm. For example, he's talking about beer. When you increase the tax on beer, a bottle of beer maybe moves from 5,000, 6,000. Somebody has been taking four bottles, will take two. Mm. At mm. the end of the day, the tax you are collecting will be much less. But it's like, it's like me, if I'm earning 200,000, you don't expect me to take two meals a day. Mm. I take one and I'm comfortable. Mm. But when the salary goes yeah, up, and I'm adding, you can meet. Yes. Mm. And when they, you know, even mm. I can, when the salary goes up to two million, mm. I can even go and eat chicken, maybe eat fish. Mm. But if I'm earning 500,000, I may have to eat cassava maybe for lunch. Mm -hmm. I didn't maybe <laughs> when, when, the you know? when, when the so taxes <laughs> increase or when you're squeezed out of your yes. 200,000, mm -hmm. you eat commando <laughs> <Yes>. and Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, when I look at really these taxes, government is not going to get much out of them. You look at the 200, why so the 200 on social media. Let me tell you. Why is so pessimistic? Let me tell you, it's not being pessimistic, mm -hmm. factual. Mm -hmm. Look at the 200 on social media. People have been buying these bundles. Yeah, yeah, time and so on. The, 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 the price is going to go down. Mm. The price is going to go down. You, you, then you go to mobile money. People, like we are saying, they are looking for alternatives. How can I send money? Mm. Mm. There, there's a question for you here, Professor, from yes. Bernard Ampeiru, um, mm. Ampeiru, uh before we take the break. He says, uh, a big number of social media users have switched to accessing social media via VPN. VPN, VPN is virtual private networks. Yes. What will be the impact of this to the new tax? Of, of course, it depends on how many people can use it. There mm. are those who know how to use it, but you say, look, let me pay the six one, the, the yes. six thousand. Mm. There are those who will go to internet cafes and access through internet cafes. You know, many places around Kampara mm. or towns, they now provide free internet. They don't even have to know whether you're a customer there or not. You go there, it's free internet. So you go there and still access. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, but the impact, that one may not be much. It's only the elite that will just be using VPN. Okay. Uh, uh, let me just take one more message and then we'll take a break. Um, ask on Apito and Varia. I, I don't know why this guy wants both of you to, to be answering. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever this is. I'm not a professor, <laughs> so we don't put it in the same bracket. <laughs> if Rwanda and Tanzania, mm -hmm. um, for emphasis, Magufuli are insisting on local engineers and the systems are working, what is different with Uganda? Is it incompetence of engineers or weak labor laws? Let's take a break. We'll answer that after a very, uh, when we come out of that very short break. Welcome to this last segment. Uh, the World Cup is closing in uh, to, towards the end. Uh, all those who are complaining about African teams, the four teams that have remained, all the others from across the world have been beaten out of the World Cup. I was wondering if uh, 
Germany, Spain, and other African teams. They, 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 are, they are no longer in the World Cup. I think it's now down to England, uh, Croatia, um, uh, England, Croatia, France, France and, uh, Belgium. and Belgium. Mm. Uh, so it's been narrowed to, 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 to that. Uh, we'll be uh, watching on the, the sports European team. European Union now. Hmm? It's the European it's Union. The yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> it's very sad for the Russians who are the hosts and uh, the, 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 the English are very excited. Uh, Croatia, the president went off and uh, was offering generous hugs to and if I've been joking about <laughs> her effect on, on, on the team and its, its, its progress so far. Uh, th 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 that's been phenomenal. Uh, also, there have been discussions um, in Kampala, actually, uh, with uh, the warring factions in uh, South Sudan. Uh, they are making some steps uh, towards uh, resolution of the conflict. I think one of the proposals, um, Ona, you, you're aware, mm. is it uh, four vice presidents? Yeah. I don't know vice whether that uh, solves <laughs> the problem of South Sudan or not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it is in five, four presidents. <laughs> <laughs> the dual <laughs> president, I guess, four vice presidents. already there, so they have to create four others. Eh, they have to create, they, they could have also created three others and, and, and shared out <laughs> the, because it's a vast country, still much larger than Uganda, they, they, they could accommodate another uh, four mm. presidents. But we'll not discuss that in detail now because maybe you're going to also borrow from there no. so that each region has a vice president yeah that's possible you, the you, you need to become president <laughs> first <because laughs> uh, someone here says um, um uh, mr Warikis, i salute you thank you moderator for hosting the gentleman thank you um someone he says we have lost 80 percent of our local engineers due to outsourcing you have lost not the engineers you have lost the, lo the jobs for those engineers due to outsourcing uh, your voice call records are kept in an outside country to be specific. Um, our security is also at stake. I think Professor Maria is not aware of what is happening. Let Mr. Werike this time bring him up to speed on mm -hmm. what is going on in these outsourced companies. A mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, viewer here says, um, uh, Professor Maria used to train... Okay, this one I had read. I think he sent it in a text message. I've, I've read that message. Um, another viewer says... Um, There's one who raised an issue. Yes, we I will, we'll, we'll come to that in a moment. Uh, thanks, gentlemen, for the program. I would like to come in here about telcos outsourcing. These telcoms outsourcing outside Uganda, in fact, to be precise, they outsourced... I'll not mention the country because I, I know what company you're trying to talk about. I, will, um, I, I told you I've seen some of the memos, or some of the correspondences, including with UCC and uh, the Ministry for ICT and the Ministry for Gender and the President. As some of us, uh, we are victims of circumstances here because from nowhere they said we are not renewing contracts last year because they had parallel workforce to perform what we used to do um, uh, on uh, the, the network. Um, uh, by the way, the panel should note that poor people are not on social media. Anyone in social media owns a small phone, is able to service it by charging in electricity and buying MBs on top of airtime. Therefore, social media is a luxury. No one will starve because of it. Even if one got off it, they lose nothing. On Thursday, I had a big gathering of all LC1 chairpersons of Russia. 438 and only three are on social media. So, who are we talking about in this equation? There is no Omuntu Wahansi on social media at all. Ugandans are not exposed and they speak from a very narrow perspective. Elsewhere in the world, people work for government tax throughout their working lives and that's why their people, eh, their countries are rich and, and people are poor. Um, um, this is a message uh, you, because uh, she mentioned uh, holding a meeting of a gathering of all LC1 chairpersons of Brasher constituency. This is the member of parliament for Brasher County, uh, the Honorable Margaret Muhanga. Uh, you, 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 gentlemen, you respond. Ongwen Kisangala is watching us, says, uh, Good evening, Fourth Estate. To widen the tax base, someone needs to remind Museveni that himself and, himself and thousands more are owning uncountable heads of cattle for which they pay no tax. If all cattle owners pay only 1,000 per year for each mature animal in their herd, can you imagine the amount of revenue they would generate. Ongwen is Kisangala. That's an interesting view, Ongwen. Uh, um, Anthony, Anthony is watching us from the, 
from the United States and says the Ugandan government had an opportunity to have a good grip on the telecom sector as they owned a huge stake in UTL. Instead, they ran the company aground. Why then are they very concerned about outsourcing at the private foreign telecoms? We need to build our businesses and run them properly to world standards. I think agrees with uh, Onapito there. Uh, another viewer here says, my friend Professor Variamu Reba needs to train hackers now. There is an opportunity in every hardship. Let all IT gurus show some skills now. Uh, that, that's a challenge to you. You'll respond to that. Um, this one says, um, well done, Professor Variamu Reba is offside. The outsourcing is okay, but whoever they outsource to is not regulated. So they keep taking the servers outside to a central place where they employ 100 hundreds of engineers to do work remotely at a cost of local engineers. Professor Barry used to train, okay, this one I have read, and uh, that those messages I have read already. There are many messages, <coughs> gentlemen, I'm sorry, so I'll take a bit of time. Another viewer here says, um, in, uh, okay, that one I have read, Social, uh, Charles Median. <laughs> My other worry is, does the government understand the technology of these companies collecting this tax? Are they monitoring or relying on their figures? I am afraid we may get into high-tech fraud scandals. Bernard in Peirwe. I believe Bernard is in somewhere in Rubaga. Um, uh, someone says, uh, Levi Zache uh, says, um, I hope you're well. Thanks for the fourth estate. Big question in light of recent taxes on OTT, mobile money. Is it taxation being used as a delicate fiscal policy tool to spy economic growth in the different sectors? Is their policy convergence as far as the tax policy relates to the growth of different sectors of the economy? Or is it now all about raising revenue to the detriment of the economy? I need us to respond to this um, uh, message from Levy. I, I, I think let's take that for now. I have some other messages here. Let me also take this. Oh, gosh. Uh, Ugandans sell their milk and coffee by airtime. 200 of the jobs are shipped just in one company buying equipment technology from uh, and consultants from outside the country where is the local content 200 jobs are not paying taxes and salaries paid is benefiting another economy if all foreign companies adopt this principle of job exports what will happen to this country uh, Bernard I have taken your message I think uh, yeah Bernard, I have taken your message and uh, this one yes I think I have also yes Tell on Peter Uganda is one of the countries with a very high unemployment rate, standing at over 75 percent. Any job lost is a huge impact. Therefore, <coughs> 200 is not, is not just a little number, as you are putting it. Bona, you are in the hot seat tonight, huh? Yeah. People are sending messages. You and the professor. I, I knew. I knew. Uh, th th there's prizes for Christopher. So I think I'll just answer the overall question sure. of. Do, do we, should, should people pay taxes? Absolutely. I'm one of the biggest pro proponents of taxation. I believe that this country is actually undertaxed. Oh, really? You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Please it explain. is justified under taxation. Because even the, the little taxation is often contentious, whether it's doing the right thing. I think we need to move to, maybe it's not anywhere in the world, but I would really love a situation whereby tax is targeted more like service fees of some sort. So if you are looking at the OTT, it should be geared towards improving ICT mm -hmm. where there is a weakness. If there is a tax which is, the argument is about health, people should be told that they should pay the tax and they actually see the health gap closed. If it's a tax to improve power, let it be so. I think where people tend to argue whether they should pay tax or not is when this money is lumped and then of course the big arguments comes infrastructure which you can also you can see roads but there are also things which touch people you know mm. the, this time is about end and school fees is coming so you can't just tell me that it's all <laughs> it's good that there's the infrastructure but I, I, how does tax relate to my ability to, to pay fees mm. Mm? these are real questions that someone deals with day to day in their house. So until when taxation answers all both big macro economy issues but also personal pocket issues, 
tax will always be challenged. Jeff, can you pick mm -hmm. can you pick it up from there? Mm -hmm. I want to agree with the <coughs> honorable Nokito that it's our mandate and we have to pay taxes as citizens of Uganda. But what worries me, what defeats my thinking, is the taxes that Ugandans are paying now currently are not put to good use. The expenditure, the wasteful expenditure of of, of resources in the country. Because look, the state house budget, the travels, parliament itself, the creation of new constituencies, the creation of new districts, all this money is being put to waste. And then you convince an average Ugandan to actually pay taxes when you are actually misusing the money that is already in place. Then too, we have to look at uh, incentives. If government is tax people, which area should we tax? And how does it affect an ordinary person? Mm. Because some people have the capacity to pay tax and others don't have. Because those who don't have the capacity to pay tax should be given an environment so that they can also be empowered and have jobs in order to have some money and then they can pay taxes. Because look here, the 100 shillings on the petrol pains me so much than the, the OTT and the mobile money. Mm. But you could transfer that 100 shillings to maybe vehicle registration. So that for 10,000 onto the vehicle registration as an extra fee for the third party, which is a, uh, I could look at it as a luxury. If vehicle registration fees increased yes. years ago, yes. um, uh, the tax on uh, fuel mm -hmm. was part, the, the government a few years ago removed uh, road license yes. and charged that money directly through the fuel tax, through increasing the fuel tax. Yes. And I think at present, um, I, I need to check my numbers, I think you pay about um, 920 9, 9, 9, 9, to, yes, about 920 shillings mm -hmm. on a little fuel. It's tax, yes. government tax. Yes. Uh, it moved a little bit up from, um, uh, it was about 700 now. It's b when you add the new 100 shillings increment, you, you're moving close to about, the, uh, about 900 shillings yes. is government tax. So if you buy a liter of fuel at, 4,040? Uh, or, or, yeah, 4,040. Shillings, yes. One thousand, uh, uh, close to 1,000 or 900 shillings is going to government as a direct tax. Yes. Yeah, so you can go on. So now, other than taxing these in incentives that actually move the economy, that benefit of us, all of us, that everybody, including an average man or a rich person, will require to buy for the day-to-day -day living, you'd rather tax something that we all afford or we all need, but does not directly impact on our everyday income. Because the OTT, the mobile money, and taxation, these are daily expenditures that every Ugandan, on average, uses every day. The, the, the MP from Russia said uh, mm. you can live without yes, social I, media. I, I, had her, yes. I had her concern, but mm. I don't know where her constituency is located. Mm. I was in Kayunga, I, in I Bali, the Bali Congo, right? Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> that constituency <laughs> is 80 kilometers away from Kampala. For clarity, her constituency is my constituency. So okay, she, she's my MP. And you are one so of your, 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 your her electorate, right? Yeah, yeah, one I'm, I'm, her yes, I'm one and of her electorate. And on social media, mm -hmm. the messages you are reading <laughs> on the show are coming on social media. Mm. Okay? So you see how important social media is. We have people watching this uh, talk show live on YouTube and they are not actually sitting in their houses. So social media is very important for all of us. This is a developing economy. We are in the dot com era. This is not 1999 anymore. This mm. is 2018. You see, Facebook had to invest a lot of money here because they had to come and uh, give the accessibility through the fiber and everything. They don't just come from satellite or whatever. They invested a lot of companies like MTN were digging on the roadsides, everything, and they were trying to put the fiber to reach to every last person in the village. Now, this facility is in place. You can all, all of us uh, have access to social media. Now, for you jumping over the table and then you say, ah, now you have to pay 200 shillings per day. Even make it so difficult for us to pay that you have one <laughs> avenue, more per money. So to mm. me, we should tax things which are important that we all need, but they do not directly affect an ordinary person that you feel the government in your pocket. Because once we all feel the government in our pocket, we will rise up against the government, which may not be the intended action. Thank you. You thank throw you, the government from your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank, you. thank you, Jeff. I'm, uh, uh, Chris, I need to come to you. B because we are basically winding up the show. Mm. I am... Um, how does this fit into job creation? My, my, I have a concern with NOTO. You tend to only look at your members. You don't look at the workforce broadly uh, when you are doing your advocacy on who is losing out and who is not. I want to correct you t mm. by saying that we don't only look at our members. We look at everybody called a worker. Just like this time around, you saw all civil servants, 350,000, are going to benefit on increment. All this, the only thing is just defiance of the 
the workers, not accepting to be our, our members. But coming back to <coughs> uh, what you're saying, uh, Professor here was talking about issues like you can go to the cafe, you can go where. I think what we need, we need to, to first of all understand these tax, maybe apart from mobile money. The issue of social media, I think there are alternatives. Let's not alarm immediately on this story where we are going. And this takes me back to the one who said that those who have cows, why don't they tax? It goes back to where G tax was. Mm. At the time of G tax, people who had cows, like my father had coffee, had cows, they would come and account those things. The tax he was paying was different mm. from the other one who was paying at the, the minimums. So this is the areas where government should maybe go back and look at. And no, no wonder when someone is talking about no Ghana is paying G tax. Ah, that's good news. People should just continue taking Marwa every day at the cost of 2,000, <laughs> contributing nothing. So we, we need to review, <laughs> look at all this and put uh, the system right. But finally, as I said, we need to address the issue of, hey, there was also the other one of uh, the, the labor laws. Mm. Yeah, yeah, sure, we still have issues on the, on the labor laws because we've not come out critical like our colleagues in, in Kenya, in Tanzania, where they say that not until they find a Kenyan. Certain jobs must not be given to other people. So we need to strengthen that law mm. so, so that uh, we get out of these talks of consultants are coming. Because that law is still very weak, and once, if we don't strengthen it, we shall continue uh, having an alarming issue. Professor Bede, you have yes. the last word because you, see, you also yeah. have a lot of uh, yes. responses. I, I mainly like respond to two of them. You see, they say that information is, uh, is power, and your network is a net worth. Now, social media does exactly that. It gives information, it also helps you to network. Now, if we are talking about democratic governance and social media helps in that area. So the issue, if, even if we want to move into middle income status, you have to really be on social media. So people in your constituents who are saying they are not on social media, that's mm. not the issue. You know, my MP was focus, saying uh, yes, the people she was interacting with. We should focus on having on. everybody on social media. That's the way we are going to really progress economically. The other issue is of outsourcing. You see, we had a Coca-Cola company in Barara. Where did it close shop? So to me, the issue is that we need to look at the conditions in this country. Why is it that Mauritius is currently an outsourcing hub? Even here, Kenya, in our neighborhood. I was there recently. Many companies are outsourcing their work into Kenya. So we need to put the conditions right so that now with these companies and other companies are looking at Uganda as, an, as a country where actually we should be getting outsourced jobs here. Mm. So the issue of saying they are taking their money where you have to look at the total cost, not about the Ugandans who are not being employed. Somebody is looking at electricity, somebody is looking at all those things. Are we competitive? And at the moment we are not. Mm. You look at corruption and all these things. People are saying, look, let's cut on costs. And if you don't allow them to cut costs, they will close shop. And when they close shop, we shall even be in a worse situation. Gentlemen, our time is out. Um, uh, I, 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 I worry about the inconsistencies in government policy. Because at one day, uh, at one moment you're saying you want to make this uh, an outsourcing hub. That's why we had at the next ICT. Yes, at the next moment e -government you that. have, uh, yes, you're talking about e-government, you're talking about all these fancy things. The next moment you're talking about um, these taxes. In Even we talked about throwing the tax on smartphones yes, so that the, people can, you know. The other thing I think is something that, that uh, both Amapito and Jeff talked about. What if you about don't address the leakages, if you don't talk about the leakages <laughs> in your economy and... Uh, how disciplined you are with the taxes it doesn't actually matter how much you collect because if you look around and ask how many of the major infrastructure projects are being funded by ugandan taxpayers money vis-a-vis -vis how much you're spending on public administration which is ever ballooning then you ask yourself why are ugandans paying this much money and where will will it come from especially by, when by you the end of this year yes. we're going to enter the genius book of records mm -hmm. by having the largest parliament Enough. <laughs> and still, Our time yeah, is out. We need to get out of here. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for making time for the show. Thank you very much to you all, our viewers, for joining us tonight. I can hear the phone is ringing, uh, but sometimes we have issues with the phone. I don't want to open the lines and then we can't hear each other very well until we sort out um, how the, uh, the, the, your calls come through. We will be relying heavily on uh, social media. And we're asking you to continue this debate on Twitter, on Facebook, on WhatsApp, and on other platforms that you're on. If you're paying your, whether you're paying your 200 shillings um, uh, daily tax or you are bypassing through VIP, I have absolutely no problem with that. Continue the debate wherever you can. Uh, thank you very much to the production crew that stay up late to deliver the show to you. Uh, from uh, 
me and the NTV team that puts this show together. Wish you a very good night. We will keep you updated on what happens. I haven't just if if production can just allow me one minute. Any predictions for the World Cup final? I'm um, uh, honest, starting with you. Of course, we are loyal to our colonial masters, so to say, sir. So I, I think England. You're vouching for England. Final. Thank you. Jeff? Mm. I'll put my base on uh, France. On France. Mm. Uh, Christopher? England. England. <laughs> France. France. <laughs> so nobody, nobody is vouching for Belgium. Croatia and Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> so you can eh? join one of them. <laughs> I, 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 I'll give it to Croatia for whatever reason. <laughs> or Uganda. <laughs> you need a hug. <laughs> I need a hug. <laughs> Our time is up. We need to get out of here. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much. <laughs> Have a good night.